everyone, welcome to M Movements for DaVinci Resolve. This is a pack of 50 unique effects that are designed to give your static, boring tripod shots a little bit more life and some fun dynamic movement. It's super easy to use. Let's go ahead and jump inside Resolve and see how it works. All right, so once you install M Movements from the M Installer application, you can find it under the Effects tab under Effects, Motion VFX, and then M Movements right here. So there are six different categories. We're going to quickly walk through each of them. Okay, so here you can see I've just got this static shot here, and coincidentally it's a shot of a guy carrying a tripod. So if I wanted to add a little bit of movement, we can try one of these basic movements up here. Let's go ahead and drop on this horizontal preset right onto this clip. And you can see right out of the box we get this nice pan from right to left. It kind of matches the path that our character here is walking in. And over here in the inspector, we can change the position from as well as the position to. So the origin and the destination. So if we flip these numbers around like 0 0.6, 0 0.4, now you'll see it kind of pans in the opposite direction. And the position offset is what you can use to adjust the frame because it does zoom in to create this pan, which you can change the amount that it zooms in right here in this zoom scale. Now, most of these presets will also have these drop down menus with several different animation presets. When it's set to none, you will just get a straight linear path. But if we try something like sine, you'll see it has a slightly slower start and kind of ramps up. So it's a little bit more of an eased beginning there. And the second drop down menu refers to the out animation. So let's try something like bounce. So we get a nice ease in and then we sort of bounce at the very end. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this one. Let's try the rotation effect. Now what this one does just simply rotates your footage right out of the box. It'll do one rotation, but you can change 360 to do like, you know, 180. If you wanted to do half a rotation, and it would end up upside down. Or you can do something like, you know, 1080 if you want like three spins. If you want it to go in the opposite direction, you could do negative. So negative 720 will do two clockwise rotations like this. Pretty cool. And you can see there's a little bit of this nice motion blur and that can be controlled right here with this blur size. You can also turn it off if you don't want any motion blur. Now we could also use this as a transition. So what I'll do here is delete this and let me actually go grab an adjustment clip, which I have in my favorites, but you can find the adjustment clip just right under the effects tab right here. So I'm just going to grab an adjustment clip and layer this right over the cut point between these two clips here. Now let's go back over here and grab that rotation effect and put it on our adjustment clip. And now you can see in between those two shots, we have a nice rotation. If we wanted this a little bit shorter, we could, you know, obviously make the adjustment clip shorter and have a faster rotation. Now something to keep in mind when you put an effect on an adjustment clip, you want to be really careful not to adjust the end point right here. When you do this, it will kind of have some unwanted consequences. You can see right when this adjustment clip happens, we're already like halfway through our rotation. So you just want to make sure to only adjust the out of your adjustment clip. So if you need to change the length or the position, you want to just move the entire adjustment clip first and then drag out your output there. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to these cinematic movements. So we've got things like these blackouts, which are pretty cool. They kind of give you this flicker effect. Now over here in the inspector, you can see our zoom step is set to four. So we're getting kind of four of these flashes, but we could increase this number to something like 10. And because it's the same amount of time, those are going to be faster and more frequent. You could also adjust the duration of the clip and you can see it'll still fit in those 10 steps just in a quicker amount of time. So this could be a great way to add some extra energy to something like a music video or, you know, anything that's supposed to be really fast and high energy. Okay, so I'm gonna delete this effect and show you this defocus zoom effect. So this one's kind of cool. It gives you this realistic, sort of like the lens is auto-focusing and zooming in. And this one has these in and out sliders here. So this is proportionate to the duration of the clip. So for example, I could drag the endpoint out to the left like this and the beginning of our animation will happen quicker. And we can take the out and also drag this to the left. And now you'll see a very quick beginning and a much slower animation on the way out. And we could also grab this whole bar and kind of do it the other way around and have a very slow in animation with a much snappier out animation. 
Now with this particular effect, what could be cool is to also use an adjustment clip for this so that we have even further control over the timing. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this from the clip itself and let's bring back this adjustment clip here. Maybe we'll trim this down so it's not quite the same duration as our clip. And let's grab that same defocus zoom and put it right on the adjustment clip. And now you can see it kind of zooms in, focuses, zooms out, and still kind of lingers on that shot after the adjustment clip has completed. So you can really customize the movement combining the very intuitive in and out slider controls up here along with an adjustment clip to define where the overall effect takes place and how quickly it comes in and out. You can even stack multiple effects together. So for example, let's try this handheld camera preset. I'm just gonna drop this right onto that adjustment clip as well. And you can see both of these are actually introducing a little bit of zoom. So what I might wanna do is go up to my defocus zoom and just lower the zoom all the way because we're already zooming with this handheld camera preset. And so now we really have this realistic camera effect. So it's even focusing, zooming, some nice handheld shake there, really cool. I'm a really big fan of these dolly presets here. We have a dolly in and a dolly out. So let's take a look at this shot here. You can see this actually has the camera pushing in physically on set there. So we could kind of offset this with the dolly out preset. So I'm just gonna drop this right on that same clip. And now we've got this really interesting Zolly effect where the camera's pushing in, but it looks like the lens is zooming out, keeping our subject kind of the same size. And it's a really nice way to kind of give you this disorienting effect on your footage. Take a look at this multi-flash zoom effect. So I'm gonna drop this on to this shot here. Now, if I play through this, you can see we've got these three separate zooms, each with a flash, just as the name suggests. Now you can control the movement targets. This is where it's going to focus on, on each of those flashes. You can use the X and the Y coordinates right here, but there's an easier way to control this. So you can go down here to the drop down menu and select Fusion Overlay. And from here, you will see these green control points. The other one's gonna be kind of way out there. Now, what you can do is kind of play through this. And here's our first control point. I'm just gonna move this and kind of frame up my shot about right there. Okay, that looks good. And then we'll play again. Here's our next control point. Maybe I'll do something like this kind of have a negative space moment and maybe even zoom this one out a little bit to show a little bit more of the frame and play again. Here's our last control point. Maybe I'll go this direction and show some of the band and also zoom out a little bit like this. Now, if we play through that, you can see we've got this really dynamic movement happening with this shot, kind of showing each individual aspect of what's going on in the scene. Now, I wanna show you this camera rig. So this one's pretty cool. It's got a little bit of a 3D effect to it. Now, in this case, it kinda of does pretty much the same as the timer zoom effect, but you can also come down here to the camera controls and you can see we've got these rotation sliders here. So you can kind of adjust the rotation. And I actually think this kind of effect works really well for you know, showing some kind of UI, like here's our website, for example. Now I'm gonna also use an adjustment clip just to kind of have a little bit more control over the timing. Let's stretch this out a bit like this. Now I'll drop my camera rig effect right onto the adjustment clip. Now let me go over here to the inspector and expand each of these sections here. So I'm in the middle of my adjustment clip so I can kind of see how this is going to end. Let's go ahead and just rotate the Y a little bit, maybe even the uh, X here, give it some nice rotation and maybe offset the X. You can also change the camera target, which will really change the perspective depending on how your rotation parameters are set up too. Now the mask is off by default, but whenever you toggle this on, you can see it sort of highlights a specific area on the frame. So we can adjust this with these X and Y offset sliders, as well as the softness and the roundness. So if you're really trying to highlight a specific area on a website, for example, or maybe you're doing some kind of tutorial and you're showing some UI like I'm doing right now, this is a really easy way to sort of highlight areas of the shot and make it a lot more interesting. Now, here's another example. I think this is a really great way to show vertical content in a horizontal video like this. So I'm gonna grab that same camera rig. This time, I'm just gonna put it on the entire shot itself. Now you can see by default, it'll kind of zoom in like this, but let's go under the camera controls and actually reduce the zoom all the way 
and maybe give this a little bit of this Y rotation and maybe even change the camera target so it kind of pushes the whole frame a little bit to the left there and then I'll also change the X offset and I'm actually going to turn the background off and I'll show you why because if I move this up to the next track above I'm going to go over here and just grab a text plus and put it right beneath and I'll just put in some text I'm going to make sure in the very beginning here that you can see the text is completely covered up which is nice and I'm also going to put the same camera rig effect on my text beneath my screenshot of our Instagram page. And maybe for this, we'll rotate this one in the opposite direction on that Y axis and move the X a little bit over here, just like that. Now with the background, maybe we'll try something a little bit darker. And I'm going to enable my fusion overlay again and take the brighter end of this gradient and kind of use this to spotlight the Instagram page there. So lots of flexibility. You can use this in all different types of projects. It doesn't necessarily have to be for footage. Okay, so moving on to these lens distortions. We've got some bulge effects, some chromatic aberration. Let me quickly show you how these look. So the bulge will sort of stretch out the edges of the frame. And over in the inspector, you can control the lens distortion strength and really emphasize this kind of wide angle warping distortion type of effect. The chromatic aberration is very similar, except for this one, if you notice on the edges, you'll see this subtle little chromatic aberration. There's a slider for that. You can control just how much of that chromatic aberration you want to show. Now, I also want to show you this echo zoom preset. This one gives you these really interesting copies of your footage, kind of like a motion blur effect, but a little bit more disorienting. But the only thing I'm not loving about this particular instance is we never really get a clear image of our shot. So again, I'm gonna delete this and actually use an adjustment clip once again. Okay, so with this adjustment clip, I'm actually going to trim this so that it kind of ends where our coffee beans are kind of locked into their final position like this, okay? So now I'm gonna use this echo zoom right on the adjustment clip. And I'm actually gonna come over here and just turn the zoom all the way to zero. So if we play through that, you can see we've got this really interesting trails type of effect, and then it kind of ends with everything in focus. So kind of similar to the echo zoom, there's also this effect called the tunnel zoom effect. So let me just show you what this shot looks like without any effects on there at all. And I think this particular shot's gonna work really nicely with this particular effect. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop this right on, and you can see it kind of stretches out the edges in a really interesting way. And it starts full screen and then zooms out like this. And you can see there's a little bit of this harsh edge going around the edges. So to fix that, I could take my zoom blur strength, maybe just crank this up a lot. So you can see here as her hands kind of reach the edges of the frame, kind of creates these really interesting streaks that weren't in the original shot. It's just because we're masking the footage and then stretching that out to the edges of the frame. So it's a really interesting trippy type of effect. And lastly, we've got simulations. So you can kind of read from the titles and get an idea for what they're gonna do. So for example, Dizzy will give you a duplication of your footage and kind of blur it and shake the camera around. So it's a really easy way to give your footage that sort of drunk effect, if that's what you're going for. We've got a punch preset. This one will just kind of shake camera a little bit, kind of mimicking the effect of being hit in the face. And we've also got some walking presets. So walking in, let me go ahead and try this on the previous shot here. And maybe I'll just go ahead and disable the tunnel zoom just to show you. You can see it looks like we're sort of walking in and slowly zooming into the center of the frame. There's also one called Tremble. This one has a little bit of motion blur, some left and right shakes. So really just an easy effect to apply to really any kind of project. Something with high energy, music video maybe. So there's a lot of different effects in here that'll definitely inspire creativity. So this is in movement. Again, you can check it out. It's on our website. It's available for DaVinci Resolve as well as Final Cut Pro. I hope you check it out. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you for watching this video and we'll see you next time.